at a loss and okay. My wife is cheating on me, and I found out about it yesterday. For some context, we had previously discussed divorce since neither of us was happy in our marriage, but nothing had been filed. For the past eight months, we've been married for ten months. I've had a nagging suspicion that she's been unfaithful, but she didn't have a history of cheating, at least not in our relationship that I'm aware of. I approached her about two months ago, and she talked me out of it. So, gasped at me. She snarled at me. They told me I was neurotic and overbearing, all the nice things you want to hear from your spouse. I put it down for a bit, but the emotion lingered and became stronger. She refused to have with me, embrace me, or even hold hands with me. Physical contact is a love language for me, and her coldness heightened my uneasiness and skepticism. We began bickering about it every day and eventually resolved to split up. I couldn't handle not knowing any longer and searched through her phone when she was sleeping the following day, not even 24 hours later. I've never requested to see it in all the years we've been together. What I discovered was the most vile and graphic I'd ever had the displeasure of reading, demonstrating precisely what I'd been frightened of. I took a screenshot and forwarded it to myself over Facebook Messenger. I wanted her to know she'd been discovered. I discreetly gathered my belongings and left. I shared the images to all of our friends and her family to establish that I wasn't being crazy, and then went to my best friend's place to sleep till I could figure out what to do. Then, today, she changed her relationship status to single, began posting blatantly posts, began sharing posts intended at demeaning and villainizing me, and then texts this same buddy bragging about the fantastic she's having now, complete with images. Naturally, my buddy screenshotted this and emailed it to me at my request so that I could use it in court. We don't have any children, so I'm the only one who has to deal with all of this. I have a great support system outside of work, and I'm meeting with many attorneys next week, but this has never occurred to any of my friends or relatives. I'm at a total loss sense, despite my misgivings, I didn't want to trust my intuition. I guess the only thing keeping me sane is focused on what I need to get done. I told her before I found out anything that I wanted her to wait until everything was settled and I was moved out to explore other connections, to which she replied, I'm not comfortable with that. The past two days have been a roller coaster ride, and I'm having a hard time comprehending it all. I still want to officially split from her, but it stings my pride to know that, based on what I've researched about my state's laws, she seems to be off the. I'm hoping a lawyer will offer me some positive news on Tuesday, since despite with the help I've received, I still feel adrift. I'm at a loss for words as to what has just occurred in my life. I'm not sure what was wrong with simply waiting a little longer, or even with her being more subtle about the fact that she was cheating. She had a simple way out. Why sully that? Update. It's been a little more than six months since my last post in this group, so I thought I'd share an update that may be of use to anybody else who is dealing with a similar situation. Everything is okay with me. Despite the fact that I still have bad days when my self-worth is non-existent, I've been lucky in that I had folks back into my life that not only increase my self-esteem, but also keep me accountable. Who or what stands in the path of my resentment and rage? Following my first piece, I sought counseling. This forced me to confront problems that had plagued me from infancy and to see the world in a different way, which helped me to see the world in a more positive light. I'd had the opportunity to take some time to reevaluate and reorient my professional life and as a result, I just accepted a position that will change my life. My emotional and physical well-being have both improved, as has my worldview, which is now more optimistic than it has ever been in my life. I understand that everyone is different and that everyone is in a different position, but I guess what I'm trying to convey is that things do get better. Most of the time in little ways, but over time, those modest ways accumulate. They add up and the total amount is substantial. It's easy to be cynical and bitter, and such feelings have a legitimate role in our society. Just make sure they don't devour you alive. You do not have a permanent residence there. Feel it accepted, and then let it out of your body. What matters isn't about them, what matters is about you. It is the first present you may give yourself while you are in a state of despair. I hope everyone is doing well, or at the very least, as well as they possibly can. For those who want encouragement, or someone to rant to. My email address is always available at all times. Story 2. My friend's wife is cheating on him, should I tell him. The situation is complicated since I work in the information technology field and have been familiar with the bulk of the people in my cubicle. 
Two offices are available to us in our town, one of which is around 20 minutes away from where I now work. As a result of our shared job title and duties, I met a guy named Tony, with whom I contact on a daily basis, and who has quickly established himself as one of my go-to persons for any concerns. We had a few of girls working in our contact center, and I had already learned through previous conversations that one of them was engaged. Our client's name was Karina, and her husband's name was Eric. He was a member of our logistics team at the other corporate office. Tony had undergone significant transformation during the previous six months, and it had all been for the better. He had started going to the gym, paying more attention to his personal hygiene, and eating more nutritiously. I talked with him after our conversation, and he informed me that Karina had pushed him to begin living a better and happier life. Tony struggled with his mental health and would sometimes miss work as a result of anxiety attacks. A couple of times when I was having difficulty resolving some technical issues with the customer software, Tony came over to assist me with the process of fixing their system, and I couldn't help but notice a text from Kay with her picture on the contact photo, and they were messaging each other hearts and whatnot while he was assisting me with the process of fixing their system. I began to see them more and more often. They would always sit outside the office together for lunch on a daily basis. I also saw them instant chatting on Facebook throughout the day, as well as sending out a lot of emotional messages and sometimes making baby and love eyes at one other. Normally, I'm not the kind to become involved in other people's enterprises, but as time went on my boss started enlisting my assistance in the logistics department, which was suffering from a lack of qualified personnel. As a result, I began working two ships over there and three at my regular place of employment. Eric and I had several conversations while I was there, and we got along quite well. We ate lunch together and went to bars together, and we had a lot of the same characteristics and interests. As he started to speak, he said that he had lately been experiencing difficulties in his marriage and that he needed time away from Karina. Meanwhile, a few employees confided in me that they had seen Karina and Tony out for dinner after work or in each other's cars before the office doors opened on the day in question. So during another conversation with Eric, he revealed in me that he wasn't delighted with Tony spending so much time with Karina. He understood that they were friends, but that was about it. After three days, Tony approaches me and invites me to meet him for a drink after work, claiming that Karina and Eric would be joining us as well. My response was of course, of course, since Tony and Eric had invited me to join them because Karina and I had conversed briefly during the course of my year. She had been quite kind, and every now and then, we'd joke at Tony's peculiarities. Throughout the evening, everything went well, although I did note Tony was sitting closer to Karina than Eric and I were. I followed Eric out to his car to get cash, which was uncommon in itself. However, as I neared the door, I was stopped by an old friend who invited me to sit at her table and say hello, which was a pleasant surprise. From here, I could see Karina and Tony at our table, but from behind me, I saw he had his hand on her thigh, as if he was warmingly massaging her. This is an adult woman and an adult man, and they were both looking towards the door when Eric returned, and as soon as Eric came, his hand moved up and back onto the table. I was mortified straight immediately. They were going to ask me where I was as he approached them, and I was stuck staring at them blankly since I knew they were going to ask. I returned to the room, and Karina and I exchanged looks as if nothing had happened. Several of my employees have been confessing more and more over the course of the last three days, including myself. Although Tony and I work together and have never had an issue with him, Eric has been really unhappy about it at work, and Eric and I are fairly close, so it makes me feel like a poor friend for not being completely honest with him.